Moving to finances, Larry, have you heard of this thing called the FIRE movement? No. So basically, a lot of young people are doing this. It is financial independence, retire early. So you hear okay. you hear some young person saying, I live the FIRE method where I'm trying to retire by 30. Basically, what they're doing is we always say that the foundation of your finances should be you live below your means, save your money, take care of your credit, have emergency funds, and invest the rest so that it makes you money in the passive form. And so one thing that has been popular with the videos we've been doing about finances is the two most popular videos we've done have been the ones we do about stocks and the ones we've done about real estate. And so mm. somebody somebody wanted me to talk about how does um, someone be able to reach the fire movement with real estate. And I thought I'd show them a little example. So basically what you're trying to do is get to level one. And basically level one of the fire movement is your passive income pays for all your expenses, meaning that you've got real estate cash flow coming in, dividends from stocks. Maybe you've got some kind of website or a blog, anything that you're not having to actively manage day to day that can take care of your bills, all of them. That's level one. Level two is when you've got enough money where you can take care of your bills and then you can go buy luxury items. But I'm just talking to people that just want to get to level one where your passive income takes care of your current daily expenses. And so for kind of what I did was in real estate, you know, you go and let's say you go out here and you get a quad, a fourplex home. It's got four units. They're making you $700 a unit, which brings you to $2,800 a month. You just simply add up your expenses, which you've got your standard mortgage, taxes, insurance, lawn care, fixing stuff. And also for me, I got a property manager because I don't want to deal with it. And down at the <laughs> bottom, at the bottom, when you add up all your expenses, and this is kind of kind of similar to my situation, it's $1,800 a month. You're clearing $1,000 a month in passive income that you're not doing anything for off one property. One right. property. The, the hardest part to getting into the fire movement is making sure that you live way below your means. So not buying Air Jordans. You go buy some Air Asics out of the consignment <laughs> shop. You know, not letting your credit cards, not letting your credit cards go on month to month. Not eating out. If you're going to eat out, instead of doing it weekly, reduce it to once a month. These people, mm -hmm. and you have to always be tunnel vision on the ends justifying the means. I did this in my early 30s. When I first met my wife, I was transitioning into doing this and it has allowed us to kind of do the things that we're doing now, looking down the road five to 10 years. And you can certainly do this same thing in real estate, ladies and gentlemen, two, three, four, five properties add up. And once you just subtract what your current living expenses are, all of them, utilities, your health insurance, uh, what you need to buy in groceries, gas, whatever those bills are, set that number aside and then go to work on what you can do to either lower those expenses or start making some kind of passive income above that that can get you to the point where you can retire and work on projects you want to work on to make yourself money like me and Larry are doing. That's yeah, the that's, fire that's... movement in a nutshell. That's interesting. I, I, I'm curious to see, you know, what that's going to look like for a lot of people. If they're able to succeed with this movement, you know, I wonder what that's going to look like for the workforce, because it seems to me that a lot of the people that would be able to afford to do this are already going to be on the, you know, the upper tier of education and, and earnings. And if a lot of those people are saying, well, I'm leaving, like if they graduate from college at 22 or they go to grad school or, you know, or wherever and they leave, you know, grad school at say 25 and they're, they're retiring by the time they're in their thirties, what does that mean for our workforce? You know, because you're mean, pulling people out of the workforce that may have another, you know, 30 years in them. And these are people that are going to be skilled, people that are going to be, you know, that are intelligent and skilled workers. And now all of a sudden they're just gone. 
Well, that I mean, means that that means that the workforce is going to have to do uh, one of several things. Number one, you may have to set up your own education programs within your workforce so that people aren't forced to have to go to college to get into your desired field. We've got plants moving here doing the same exact thing, or they're setting up like six month courses at the community college. You could do that. Yeah, but that that's only but that's for some things. You can do that for some things. But what do you do when you have, you know, if you're an accountant or if you're, you know, you're a marketing exec or something and you're and you have people that are basically like, yeah, I made enough money from you guys to buy my properties and invest in my stocks and do whatever and I'm going to retire at 35. You have enough people doing that. I mean, you're you can have some real shortages in certain areas. Not to mention, it's going to drive the price of labor way up. Because if all of a sudden say, now yeah. you mm-hmm. have people that are young that you thought, oh, I can pay this person a, a good mid-tier salary because they're 35 and I expect they'll be around here for another 25 to 30 years. And this person is like, yeah, deuces, I'm out. All of a sudden now you're going to be like, whoa, wait a minute, we need you to stick around for a while longer. Nope. The only way you're gonna get them to stay, if they, if if money is even a matter for them, is just to throw more money at them and and for better benefits, which is gonna mean the cost of their labor is gonna go way up. You know. Well, that's what, that's why I said businesses have a few strategies they can adopt. If you're not gonna do the self-educating piece and tie people up in a contract, you can do what Larry is saying. <laughs> you can pay out the nose to try to keep good talent. But at the end of the day, man. Anyone who's a go-getter and they've got their mindset that they're going to do better on some other level, unless you're paying them MBA salary, and even then you're not going to keep them forever. You might keep them for three or four years, but you're not going to keep someone like that forever. And America, believe it or not, has a great workforce of people who just want to be worker bees, man. I mean, that's not for me, but there are a whole lot of people that don't want to deal with being their own boss, managing their own time, and that type of thing believe it or not right you know so no i feel you yeah so that is our financial money tip of the day if you really want to grab life by the horns take control of your life live way before your means give a try of getting into the fire movement finding a passive income source you can create so that you can retire when you want to and do what you want to to make more money if that's what you so choose to do <laughs>